Hey there, this is Terry Wheat from onceuponawheat.com. Thanks so much for joining me. I have been talking a little bit about transit as far as visiting the National Mall in Washington, D.C., but today I wanna to talk to you about transportation in Washington, D.C. in general. Coming from your hotel to whatever sites you may want to see, to restaurants that you may want to go to for supper, and then back to your hotel. So, <clears throat> As far as bringing a car, my husband and I were both raised in towns where we were really able to be independent because we were able to have our own vehicles and drive wherever we wanted to go and um, that was not an issue. And whenever we can do that when visiting a city, we do like to have our vehicle there. But um, a lot of times in large cities that is not convenient and not the best route and we will take public transportation sometimes in Washington DC. I would not recommend bringing your vehicle. It works for some and they like to do that but there are a number of things you have to think of. First of all you have to worry about driving in Washington DC traffic and although your um, traffic jams are not as long as they are in other cities and the volume of cars probably isn't as much as some of the super huge cities like New York City or LA. It is still fairly congested. The cars, everyone's in a hurry like every other big city and they can be fairly rude and make a lot of dangerous moves. It can be hazardous from what I witnessed. And so there are a lot of crazy streets, a lot of one-way streets, a lot of streets that veer off in unusual ways compared to other cities. And so it is not the easiest to maneuver. So another thing you have to consider is finding parking, which is not easy at all in Washington, D.C. From what I could tell, they seem to have a lot fewer parking garages than other large cities of their size. And the ones that they do have, many of those are um, for specific industries or for a specific hotel or for a government agency where you have to, or a business where you have to have a parking permit or a pass. And the ones that are available to the public can be pretty pricey. A lot of them close um, at the end of a workday at five, 5.30 or six. And typically with all of the walking, all of the things to see out, all of the, how everything is spaced out in Washington, by the time you go to supper, we were almost always there later than six. So um, it can be pricey. It can be around 55 a day which um, you also have to consider the fact some of those will be closed out, particularly during the week when you have a lot of office worker uh, people and um, other people visiting throughout the week on business. And so you also have to worry about um, when you park somewhere, you're not going to be able to park exactly next to where you want to be. And so it may be a half mile or a little more away from where you want to go. And then you may want to visit other things that are a mile on past that. And before you know it, you're two miles away from your car, but you have to go back to your vehicle. And you may want to go to supper in a completely different direction. And it's just not very convenient. So, and it's, um, pretty pricey. The street uh, parking is very minimal. Again, a lot of those require passes. There aren't many there. Um, if you park in the wrong spot, it is a $300 and $350 fine. And there are many, many police who watch that and who hand those out pretty quickly. So <clears throat> as far as the bus and a subway, a lot of times in a big city in the past, we have taken the public transportation and it has worked out well and it works out well for a lot of people. It's cheap and it's fairly convenient, but I don't necessarily think that it is the best option, at least for us. You'll have to gauge it for yourself after hearing everything that I have to say. But with buses and subways, you have to wait on them. And typically, in our experience, that's about 20 minutes. It can be more than that. It can be quite a bit more depending on what time you get there, what time the buses are running, what day it is. 
Um, and then you also have to, as it goes along on its route, you have to wait for all of the people exiting and getting on. And so the commute time is much, much longer than it is for a vehicle. When we rode in a car, it was about 12 to 15 minute commute for most of the places we went. And had we done that on the subway, and or buses, I tracked that and printed that out to see if that was a viable option for us. And it would have been a 45 minute to one hour commute in every case. So uh, a vehicle gets you there in a 10th of the time. And so that, even though it is um, a cheap way to go, uh, especially if you're a single person or just a couple, but um, it, isn't necessarily the most convenient and the one that makes the most sense. So a lot of times if you're going on tours in Washington, DC, such as the White House tour, or maybe um, going to the Supreme Court or the Capitol, a lot of times, not always, but you don't always get to choose your tour time. And so they can make those very early in the morning. A lot of times if you have to get same day tickets, like for the Supreme Court or the Washington Monument, you have to arrive an hour before or more. And so if you have to be there really, really early in the morning, we were not wanting to go and walk six tenths of a mile to get to the metro station and then take a 45 minute to a one hour commute when we could have been sleeping a little longer and then you know walk another four tenths of a mile or so to the spot we wanted to go to so those are all things that you need to think about if you um, are wanting to take uh, public transportation so and then when you get to uh, the metro station, like I said, it's still not going to be just like a parking garage. It's not going to be right next to where you want to be. So you could have quite a hike. And so you have to allow for a lot of extra time. Um, sometimes on a um, subway or something like that, you can run into unusual people. We saw a uh, pretty angry argument at one of the bus stations. And so when you have little kids, that can be scary for them sometimes. And so those are things to consider. Biking and scootering, those are all throughout the city. And if you're staying right in the city, even if you're staying in Arlington, there is a footbridge that you can take to get into the city. But the farther out you are, the longer it is going to take you. And <clears throat> the bike rental places are in DC. And so you would have to get to the bike rental place. You'd have to rent the bike. Scooters you can find anywhere, but you still have to get into the city. And as you get off of the National Mall, maneuvering the scooters and bikes is a little more challenging because the sidewalks are crowded. You're passing across a lot of busy, high traffic streets. And in Washington Mall, you can have along the sidewalk the path where the people are. You can have grass on the side so you can veer around if there's crowds. But a lot of um, the places throughout the city are not like that. There are buildings there or walls and so you're not able to go around the crowds. And so some of the time you will find that you are walking the bike if you were going through town. And <clears throat> if you, it takes quite a bit of time. If you have, it's far better than walking, but if you have to go to different parts of town, you're going to eat supper in Georgetown and you have, you know, other tour times earlier in the day and they're at all different spots, then that can just be too far and definitely too long by the time you are biking. It is not a good match for early morning. If you have a 7.30 a.m. White House tour, you are not going to want to go to the bike rental. Actually, they're not even open that early, but find a scooter and go there. It's not convenient for those kind of broad situations. It can be good for getting you from one close place to another fairly close place, but as a vacation plan, particularly for your whole family, that is not the way you want to go on a daily basis for your main uh, mode of transportation. So taxis, you don't see taxis as much as you used to, but they're still out there. Uh, the thing with a taxi is you don't really have any idea how much it's going to cost before you get in there. And they can take the slow route, they can take the long route, and that adds up to more that you will have to pay. And so 
I don't like um, that as well as the last option that I'll talk about. So Uber is what we ended up doing in most of the situations um, as far as getting from our hotel to the first site that we need to be at during the day. Now, as you know, if you've listened to the other videos or looked at our site, we like to squeeze as much as we can into a day. And so if you don't have very many things to do during the day, you only have one or two things and your schedule is real loose and free flowing, then you know, you may not be as pressed for time. You may not do things as early in the morning. And so public transportation may work out great for you, especially if you're single or if you're just a couple. But if you have a family um, or you like to pack a lot of things in your day, you have a lot of early morning things and you have a lot of places to be in the space of a day, then I thought that Ubering for us was a great option. And in many cases, surprisingly, you know, I had originally printed out, because you can map it on WMATA.com on Washington's uh, Metro Public Transportation site, you can use their trip planner and you can show exactly where your start place will be, what time, what day of the week it'll be, and where you want to go, and that'll give you all of the trains and or buses, you can put in there how long you want to walk. I put that we didn't want to walk more than a mile and it gives you the whole scenario of what you need to take, exactly the bus lines you need to be on and the subway uh, that you need to ride and where you need to walk and what roads you need to take and it gives you the cost per person. And in a number of those cases during their surge times, it was more than an Uber. Now, Ubering, you add a tip onto that. And so um, it did come out to be a little more on average um, than it would be had we taken public transportation every time. The Ubering I looked at, it cost us an average of $18. Um, sometimes it was as cheap as $11 and sometimes it was into the 20s. But on average, it was $18. But the public transportation, had we taken the subway and or the buses to get to somewhere, that was an average of $13 a day. And so it was $5 more to take an Uber. Whereas if we had taken the public transportation, say the morning of our White House or the morning of any of our tours, we did a lot of early morning things. And if we had taken those, it would have taken 45 minutes to an hour to get there. And so we would have had to wake up much earlier. Um, it wasn't a lot cheaper. Um, and then we would have had to walk between six tenths and eight tenths of a mile to get to our metro station from our hotel. They did have a shuttle on some days, but not every day and not on the weekends. Whereas with Uber, we were able to call and or set it up online on our phone app. And they were there within three to four minutes. We did not have to wait long at all any of the times and they were there very quickly. They took us to our destination in 12 to 15 minutes. You know before you book the Uber exactly the a range, a small range of what it's going to cost. And so it doesn't help them at all to take a long way around or to take their time. They're trying to get you there as quickly as they can, safely, before they can take their next person. And so we took the Uber for 12 to 15 minutes, it was about $5 more. We got to sleep in, you know, 45 minutes more, and it took us exactly in front of the door that we needed to be. So not only with the public transportation would we have had to walk up to eight tenths of a mile to get to our metro station, but then the metro station wasn't right near anything. And so then we would walk, in some cases, the shortest was a tenth of a mile, in some of the cases, it was six or seven tenths of a mile. And so we would have been doing a ton more walking for not that much of a cost savings. So at $5 a day, I felt like it was worth it by far for us. We have a family, we had a family of five with us, our son stayed home. And so we did have to get the larger Uber, the SUV or the minivan that could hold all of us but I felt like it um, worked out really, really well. And for just $5 a day 
more, it was a tenth of the commute time that it would have taken us in public transportation. And it saved us, I added up, it saved us walking 13 miles between and getting to transit stations and taking transit stations to the site and then getting to the trans uh, transit station again to go to the uh, restaurant or to go back to the hotel. 13 miles and 45 minutes a day savings for only $5 more a day. So it's something to consider. On Uber also you can look online and or on your app and see and it will give you a guesstimate of what that can cost. So at least look at it because on a number of days it was cheaper than the public transportation. Everyone takes public transportation just assuming of course it's going to be cheaper but it isn't always. And so for the you know, for the cost and the convenience of being dropped off at the door and uh, knowing that, you know, the line isn't going to be running way behind, you know, uh, you're not missing the bus, you know, they're picking you up at your door, they're dropping you off at the door and it's a very short time. It's a quick process, it's an easy process and it was so worth it, I thought. So those are the different options. Look at them, see what works the best for you, but for us, uh, Uber worked well and I would recommend it to others. And something else that was really awesome about the Uber and one of our favorite things about it is we met people in all but one case from other countries. We met a lot of people from Africa. We met a gentleman from Iran. We met people from all over. We met people of way different backgrounds. We met people of different religions and I am a person, if you know me well, you know that I like to have deep conversations with people. I like to get to know you. I like to get to understand you and know more about you. I wanted to learn about their lands as far as if I um, am able to visit those. And so I had some pretty deep uh, conversations with those people and all of them were really kind and um, really seemed to enjoy the conversations and participated. They asked me things about living in America and the things um, that I grew up with and the differences and um, we talked about the economy in their country, we talked about the foods that they ate, and we talked about religion, and we talked about tourism, and if it's a safe place to go, and the things that people like to go and do. We talked about their leadership and their government and how that operated. We talked about their civil wars that were going on. We talked about things going on here. We talked about many of the differences of culture between America and um, between their countries and it was really encouraging and I just think that if we got to know people and show kindness, which they said not everyone is always kind to them in an Uber, people are in a hurry and um, not everyone is nice and I feel like if we got to take the time to get to know each other, even people who are different from us, um, and talked in a kind and peaceful way and really tried to get to know each other, that the world would be a much better and more peaceful place in general. So all of them thanked me for the conversation after we got out. They uh, gave me a blessing and I gave them a blessing too as I left and it was really good. And so it was speaking with a local, someone who has lived in Washington DC for a number of years, but it's also speaking with someone who is from a different culture, a different environment, a different country, and uh, it was it was so wonderful. The stories that we learned, the kids loved it, the things they learned, and the things that they got to hear about made them appreciate their lives and uh, the ability that they have here to do different things. And so it was a great learning um, experience and a great human experience and you don't get that on a subway or a bus. People don't talk to each other. You look uh, straight ahead and it was worth that five dollars more. So hope that helped you. If you have any questions leave them below. If you like the video hit the like button. If you want to listen to our 
future videos that we're going to have. A lot of them will be on travel, but they'll also include many other things that we're interested in and that will be helpful to you. And so you can subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos. You can check out our blog at onceuponawheat.com. That is where I write all of my travel articles. And so you can catch us there. And also we'd love to see you on social media. Come follow us. We are available on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest as well as YouTube. And all of them are going to have a different flavor. So we'd love to have you at all of them. And so thanks so much for joining us and I'll talk to you soon.